we can finally confirm the San Jose Sharks are the worst team in the entire NHL. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. Probably part of the Locked On Network. We cover your team every day, even when they are officially the worst team in the NHL. Uh, so if you want to be an everyday, or all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can watch on YouTube as well. And today we're going to be talking about uh, the Sharks. We're kind of a little bit of a state of the franchise, kind of what's next. I think it's kind of the best way to put it. As the Sharks have officially clinched the top odds to land Macklin Celebrini in the drafts. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Will Smith in his final game uh, of the season for Boston College and kind of his future and why I think he should be in San Jose next year. And then, of course, we'll uh, cover the Sharks 6-2 uh, to loss to the Minnesota Wild. So before we get to all that, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. And as your tank commander, proud to say mission accomplished. We have done what we set out to do, and that is to, again, put yourself in the best possible position to draft Macon Celebrini. The Sharks, uh, with their loss, have now locked up the top spot, according to Tankathon. Um, so basically, even if the Sharks win out here and they get two more points, and assuming Chicago is going to lose out because Chicago's schedule is brutal down the stretch here um, as they play. I'm recording this at like 2.30 on Sunday. Um, so Chicago or plays versus Carolina, then they play at Vegas at LA. LA probably doesn't need that game. Um, but still, like these teams are much better than them. All of those are playoff teams. Um, all those teams have a chance to go very far in the playoffs. We expect Chicago to lose out, and even if the Sharks win out, right? Um, when they play Edmonton on Monday, and then they end the season versus Calgary, the Sharks will win because of the tiebreakers. They have less regulation losses. They have a t- they tiebreaker edge in, in um, head-to-head versus Chicago. Like everything is just Sharks here with that. So um, they have locked up the top odds, which gives them a twenty-five point five percent chance to win number one overall. Um, and draft presumed uh, number one pick Macklin Celebrini. I'm going to say presumed um, because you never, ever, ever know, but I would be at this point shocked if it wasn't Macklin Celebrini, um, who's the first, again, like how we saw with your officer Slavkovsky a couple of years ago. Um, you never want to say never, ever, ever, but I think Macklin Celebrini is the clear cut number one uh, player in this draft. And I think again, the ties are too deep. The storybook is too good uh, for the Sharks to not uh, at least draft him if given the opportunity. So um, so let's kind of talk about what this means, right? If, if the Sharks are in the position to draft Macklin Celebrini, um, again, we don't know. It's up to the lottery balls, um, et cetera, et cetera. But like you, you've you've done it, right? You've this season has been a long and hard season for sharks fans right um there has not been much to cheer for um and you're hoping that this you know this is kind of the the turning point right of of the sharks um you've seen william ecklin who really i think has established himself as a future nhl star um he is well on his way to be in you know a point or half a point per game player in his full season on a team that averages about two goals a game a little over two goals a game um, has really established himself playing with, you know, we, we know who Ekwin's been playing with um, this season. And I think, you know, that that was one of the, the big kind of to-do lists for the year is figure out what you have in Ekwin. And I think the Sharks have a budding star in Ekwin. Um, and when you match him with other potential high-end talent, Will Smith, who we'll talk about here in a little bit, and hopefully Macklin Celebrini, you can look at, 
this core and you know look realize the sharks are going to have potential stars it's not superstars coming in the pipeline um in this team they still have a lot of stuff to do right figure out the core is hard figuring out the pieces that fit with the core is even harder if, if that makes any sense but um you've done the groundwork right you have put yourself in the best position to draft a macklin celebrini um and that that makes if if the sharks land celebrini and celebrini turns out to what we think celebrini is going to be then it makes it all worth it right you you wear this season like a badge of honor of yeah we survived we went through this right we went through we went through some terrible years we went through a year we traded uh the franchise's you know favorite player um if not one of the favorite players if not the favorite player and, and tomas hurdle We've seen other fan favorites like Brent Burns go, Timo Meyer go. We saw Eric Carlson get like you've seen so many pieces move out in hopes that again you are trying to build the next sustainable winning Sharks team, the uh, next team that you can you know go on another five, six, seven, eight year run of just being constantly in the mix. Right, that that is the hope is to put yourself in that. Best way to do that is to draft and develop young talent. The Sharks are putting themselves in the best position. So um, that's the hope, right? <laughs> you went through this season. Can can you at least, can we get something for it? And even if the Sharks don't draft Macklin Celebrini, uh, you know, because, again, 25% chance that they do, 75% chance that somebody else moves up. Um they're they're still gonna be great players available and the sharks can only it worst 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 case scenario is two teams move up um the sharks can only move can only fall down to number three um so you're still gonna be positioned to grab a great player whether you know if you want to go whoever you want to draft right if it's a lindstrom um if you want to draft uh Silya, if you want to ivan demidov like there's plenty of a uh, of great players that you can pick at two or three and then this Penguins pick, which we're getting a little worried, but I mean, this Penguins pick is probably going to end up 13, 14, or 15, is assuming the Penguins don't make the playoffs. I know they've had a really good stretch here recently. You're going to be walking into this draft with either the number one overall and one, two, or three overall, and then a pick on the, another pick in the top 15, and then two picks very high in the second round thanks to your own pick and then thanks to the new jersey pick part of the timo meyer uh trade so um you as a sharks fan have plenty of ammunition to do whatever you want whether it's you know trade up if there's a player like z booyum who had an amazing we'll talk a little bit about booyum here in a little bit um who had an amazing game and um helping to establish himself as one in this kind of draft class of defensemen that everybody has some question marks uh, and William does have his question marks, right? The size, you know, he's six foot, six foot one, somewhere in that range um, compare and GMs love them. A six foot four right-handed defenseman. William is not that, but I think William is a, a very special player. And if you want to kind of move up, you have the ammunition to do that. Um, if you want to wait and see how the board kind of falls to you, you can do that as well and be patient. If you want to trade back, you can do that as well. Um, the Sharks just, again, you have so much ammunition and so much flexibility. Um, but again, can you start to build? That That is going to be the, the, the question I think we're going to be talking, spending a lot of, of the summer talking about is how do you now start to build, right? You, It's a rebuild. The Sharks have finally admitted it's a rebuild. We're getting into the building aspect of the Sharks. It's easy to tear it down. Um, now, how do we build things up? And landing a foundational piece like Macklin Celebrini um, to pair with a Will Smith and a Quentin Musty and a William Macklin. We got Borlo and Gushin and Shakira Mukumadulin. Um, now, how do we continue to build and make this sustainable, long term sustainable success? So, um, it's been a long season, Sharks fans, but again, we're, we've put ourselves in the best best possible position to succeed here. Um, so, yeah, it feels good to, to at least enjoy these last two games, right? You can go into these games and play spoiler um, if you want. Like, you can kind of have some fun. The weight is off. You can go win these games. It doesn't matter. Like, it, it just doesn't matter. We can root for our for wins here 
have it'd be nice to go out on a win and, and have something just a bit of a positive note going into the offseason, especially if Gushin, who is recalled today, or Jack Thompson. If some of these guys flash here in these final two games, um, William Eklund continues to play what like we can enjoy help enjoy our summer a little bit more so um we're going to be talking about somebody who has a big decision this summer in one will smith uh we'll talk about his uh the championship kind of what at least what i think he should do kind of talk about the decision here uh in just one second passion drive and patience the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive ebay motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and more whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you'll always find exactly what you're looking for with the ebay guarantee fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're bringing rubber not cash. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. All right. Uh, Will Smith. Uh, who Boston College unfortunately lost two to nothing to uh, University of Denver. Congratulations to University of Denver, uh, winning their 10th championship. Uh, and our boy Eric Polkamp walking into another championship caliber team uh, next year is, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, hopefully, him and Zeke Bouillon playing together. That'd be great. Um, that'd be really fun. So, but let's talk about Will Smith, right? And Will Smith, I thought, had a really good game despite just not getting production, right? And sometimes, I mean, you and I have watched hockey long enough that goalies are the great equalizer. And sometimes goalies are just that. And um, hats off to, to Matt Davies, uh, who played out of his mind, like – out of his mind in that game just insane save after insane save was con especially the third period uh when bc threw haymakers at little haymakers at him and he's just just keeps swimming just keep like goalies are weird voodoo um but will smith was was huge in that game and just right we we've we've seen will smith as the games get bigger, he his play gets bigger, and he, he played a great game in this game, right? Seven shots on goal. Had a breakaway that just got stopped, right? Um, had another, like, crash. That, like, there was two goals easily Will Smith could have had if he scored on the breakaway, and then he crashes the net, and the puck just unable to kind of squeak under through the five hole there. Um, like, there was – this this game could have – you know, if you play this game nine out of – you know, ten times – the way BC played, they probably win, you know, seven of them. It's just the goalie was was the difference in this game, and that's what happened. So, um, yeah, I I was thoroughly impressed with with the way Will Smith played this game, um, and he was basically the third period. They were just swapping the the coach Cutter Gauthier line uh, and the Will Smith line. I know they kind of switched things up, but they were just like rolling those two lines out. Um, you guys, you guys got us here. Can you get us? Can you kind of tie things up uh, here? So, Will Smith, though, finishes 71 points um, this year, 25 goals, 46 assists, um, 130 shots. Uh, yeah, I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I think Will Smith uh, should should go pro. Um, I, if Will Smith goes, but decides he wants to go back to college. Um, I totally get that. Like he's going to go back. BC is still going to be a really good team, right? I assume if he goes back, I assume the rest of the freshman line will go back because Will Smith will probably talk his friends into going back. Um, because yeah, we talked his friends into going to BC to begin with. Cutter Goche is most likely leaving. I would be shocked if he goes back, to be honest. Um, and Will Smith will kind of elevate himself into that top line role. And it makes a ton of sense, right? Um, but that that line was like it was almost too good, if that makes sense. <laughs> like, I think my my big thing with with why I think he needs to go pro is because 
I think we need to see Will Smith kind of get out there, right? Um, you know, you look at like like Justin Timberlake, right? Part of a great group in NSYNC, and those guys did amazing things. But you got to see what happens when you get out on your own. And Timberlake has had a great career out on his own. Uh, some of the other guys, maybe not so much, but uh, like um, Elite Prospects, they put out a um, you know a preview for for the championship game, and they have access or they've charted some of the stats here um, from the season for these lines. So we have uh, the Pro Smith Leonard line played four thirty three uh, four hundred thirty three minutes this year. So I mean, we we saw that line was glued together right Corsi 4 per 60 76.4 percent Corsi loud per 60 48.6 per 40 sorry 76.4 shot attempts per 60 so they're averaging a shot attempt over a shot attempt every minute per 60 and they're giving up about uh they're giving up 48.6 so basically three-fourths of a shot every 60 Shots forward per 60, 47 actual shots on goal, 47.3 to 27. Um, goals four per 60, nine. This team, this if this line played a full 60 minute, if you could like like in NHL, we just turn off uh you know, like tiredness or whatever. This this line would average nine goals a game. Um, goals allowed 1.7. And yes, like the you know some of the like shots allowed in Corsi allowed are they're less than some of his teammates. Like the the Cutter Goche line averaged twenty six uh, Corsi allowed per sixty. Um, but again, none of those lines are are putting up the offense. That that's the whole defenses for nerds go score goals is if you control the pace of the game by trading shots. Um, you don't have to play defense, right? You are the one controlling the pace. Um, Corsi 4%, 61% for this line. Shots 4%, 63%. Goals 4 84%. So anytime uh, a goal was scored, 84% chance it was going to be coming from this line. All nice shooting percentage, 19%. Like this, this line was just absolutely nuts. And that's my thing about if they stay together and go back is they're just going to do that again, which is great. But are you really developing, right? If you are just a, again, I don't want to say a, a, a big fish in a small pond, but you kind of are, right? Like you're not really, and you, you're you same environment. You're going to have the same kind of teammates and Jacob Fowler is going to be back. Like you're going to have an amazing, outstanding goaltending again. And this team is going to be good again next year. Like they're, you're, um, you're going to be fine, right? Maybe not this level good. Maybe they take a step back, which is fine. But like this, this team is going to be one of, you know, going into next off season, probably one of the five best teams, at least heading into the off into the season. Um, and that's with Cutter Goche leaving and whatever seniors graduate. Like this team is still going to be really, really good. But I don't know if, if Will Smith is going to get a chance to develop on the skills he needs to develop. And we all know those skills, right? Is playing a more two hundred foot complete two hundred foot game. Um, you know, I think like some of his decision making right where he is trying to maybe do a little bit too much and again when you have a guy like will smith who uses your, this creativity it's always better to ask them to kind of rein it back than to try to continue try to continually pull it out and i think him learning that balance which is going to be an adjustment period and every player goes through it um is like i don't know how much he's going to learn that in college because he's been able to do it last, this whole year and he had one of the greatest freshman seasons ever um so that's my that's like i think the best way to for him to continue his development is to play against better competition and again NCAA hockey is amazing. It is some of the best competition in the world. Um, I really enjoyed like following this team this year, uh, especially covering <laughs> the Sharks team that we we've watched this year. Um, it's been fun to watch them just steamroll people, and I fully expect them to kind of do the same thing again. Especially if this line, the the freshman line, which I guess we'll have to come up with a new name for next year if they come back, um, you're gonna have to like. You're 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 gonna have to figure out other ways to kind of continually develop um, and continue that. And yes, he's gonna get full opportunities with Cutter Goche gone. I expect Will Smith to be playing penalty kill. Like you're going to, he's gonna get these opportunities. But again, 
you're going to be in a very comfortable position again, playing with Leonard and playing with Perro. Um, and at some point, you gotta, we gotta see what Will Smith looks like without these guys around. And I think now's the time. I think um, coming to San Jose, where again, how do you start building now? Um, Sharks are going to have a very interesting offseason. They have plenty of cap space if they want to sign players to try to help insulate these young players. And, you know, you could have a, a offseason where you're adding Will Smith and Macklin Celebrini, um, you know, an 18 and a 19 year old to your roster. You're going to need some veterans around to help insulate these players. And that's, I think that's going to be what Mike Greer is, is going to have to do this offseason is it's to try to insulate. I mean, even if it's neither of them come this year. You got to start getting ready for for some of these young guys to to make their impact. So, um, but yeah, I think it's time for Will Smith to to make the jump. Um, we'll we'll see what he does. Um, I don't expect any news here soon, especially again the Sharks signing him um, right now. It doesn't make a ton of sense with two games left in the season to burn your whole ELC a whole year of your ELC for two games. I don't see it. Um, but maybe after the Sharks season ends, we can maybe get some clarity on it. So. Um, but yeah, we'll see what Will Smith does again. If he wants to go back to college, more power to him. If he wants to go pro, I think it's the right, I think it's the right time for him. So, uh, we'll talk about the Sharks wild game. Um, and there's six to two loss here in just one second. I know the season's almost over, but you can still win big playing daily fantasy hockey on sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the locked on NHL network. Sleepers are number one choice for daily fantasy sports, and especially daily fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win a hundred times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick some of your favorite players, whether they're NHL superstars like McDavid, Crosby, or McKinnon, or some of your favorite San Jose Sharks like Zettelin, Granlin, or Eklund, record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a hundred times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You're in Sharks fans. You can win a hundred times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks. So you can start winning big use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. All right. Um, and <laughs> The third thing that happened this weekend, the Sharks also played, and they lost 6-2 against the Minnesota Wild. And, um, yeah, this was a game that felt kind of sleepy-ish. Um, Sharks still made it interesting, but I, at the end of the, the second period, um, another kind of collapse from the Sharks. End of the second period, beginning of the third period. Um Kind of the collapse from the Sharks that we have seen for much of the season. Um, and that was kind of all she wrote, especially when Kirill Kaprizov is left all alone um, in front of the net. I don't care who you are. Tough, tough stop work there. So um, let's kind of dig in. We'll kind of dig in the numbers and use that as a springboard to kind of talk about some of the, the players in this game. But we had 52 and a half minutes of 5v5 time. Shot attempts were 61 to 46 in favor of the Wild. Corsi for 57 uh, to 43%. Actual shots at 5v5, um, 35 to 25 in favor of the Wild. 9 to 3 high danger chances, 33 to 30, 17 scoring chances, and a 2.48 to 1.21 expected goals for in favor of the Wild. And again, this Sharks team kind of was hanging in there for good chunk of this game um but it very much felt like the wild was controlling the pace of this game and they just couldn't solve mackenzie blackwood until they could solve mackenzie blackwood and that was um late in the second period when they gave up two goals right kind of back to back um it had a goal made at 3-1 the sharks answered a uh, great assist uh by notice that patter william Eklund, um as he is up to 44 points this season um and Again, he's he's good. So uh, we'll see. You know, the last two games, kind of where he finishes up here. But um, the Sharks, though, just kind of 
shot themselves in the foot here at the end of the the second period and that's been the story of the sharks right it's kind of when things fall apart they fall apart for them and you know I, I, those two goals back to back was was kind of the dagger um for the sharks as capri's off goal is just like right in a row um one of them a little bit fluky um but you know it with kind of bounced around and blackwood kind of pushed it in himself uh, but the other one was Blackwood was left all, or sorry, Kaprizov was left all by himself um, on the power play. And again, Kaprizov is too good uh, to not have somebody on him all the time. Um, as for the lines in this game, so uh, we had the Grandland, uh, Eklund, Zetterlin line played 1404, uh, 14 to 23 shot attempts, 8 to 13 actual shots, two goals for. One gold allowed, 0.36 to 0.81 expected goals for three to 14 scoring chances, two to two high danger chances. Um, so yeah, line that line kind of got pushed around a little bit, but they did have two goals. Um, so that that's that line's your bread and butter, right? And that's, that's just gonna be right now, at least that that's that line is if that line's not going, then the sharks have literally no chance, basically. Um, Clem Costin, Luke Cunning, and Colin Graf played 1140, 10 to 17 shot attempts, three to nine actual shots, did give up two goals, 0.11 to 0.48 expected goals, four, five to seven scoring chances, zero to three high danger chances for that line. Um, I really like Gra Graf a lot. I, I do see a lot of potential there. I want to see him get it again. Can we see him get a chance to just tee one off? Watching his college tape, he has a really good one-timer, and you saw it on the power play. And even in this game, Sharks decided to run the five-forward unit power play with uh, Bordelow, Graf, and the Luns. I just want to see him get a chance to tee one off because um, I, I want to see that shot. That's that's basically all I'm asking for here in the last two games is can we get like can we get Colin Graf a really good chance here? Um, but you can... You see the smarts. I think he, he's a really smart player. Um, I don't think the game has gone too fast for him so far. Again, I know these games here at the end of the season can be a little little wonky with guys sitting, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, right, that's what you want him to do right now, just kind of get used to it, and then that way he can kind of use the offseason to to prepare for what it's like. Kind of, you know, you're, you're kind of throwing him in the deep end and, and seeing what, what happens. So, um, but yeah, I think there's, there's a lot there to like, I still, I kind of expect him to start in the, the AHL next year. And I don't think that's the worst thing for him where he can kind of get his sea legs underneath him and then get called up at some point. But, um, again, this is found money with Congraf. So, um, Sturm Carpenter LeBanc played nine thirty one nine to five shot attempts, five to three actual shots, uh, did give up a goal 0.21 to 0 0.08 expected goals for, um, five to two scoring chances, uh, zero to zero high danger chances. And what was Kevin LeBanc's last home game in San Jose? Uh, I'd be shocked if he's back. Um, especially with the, uh, him and Quinn don't seem to see eye to eye, but, um, that line played pretty well. And then we have Borlo, Sudika, Bailey. Played 758, 6 to 6 shot attempts, 4 to 4 actual shots, 0.34 to 0.25 expected goals for, uh, 3 to 2 scoring chances, uh, and then 1 to 1 high danger chances for that line as well. So um, Borlo, again, I think he's making the case to be a, a full time NHL player next year. Um, and we'll spend plenty of time this offseason talking about uh, Borlo, kind of where he fits in with the future of the Sharks. And we'll end with Mackenzie Blackwood, uh, who had 32 saves on 38 shots, six goals against. Expected goals against was 3.24, 842 save percentage. Eight for 10 high danger shots, seven for nine on the mid danger, and then 15 of 17 low danger. And again, maybe not Blackwood's best night, uh, but he was kind of under siege all night, and the Sharks' offense really didn't help him out too much. Um, but I'll be, I'm kind of curious if he plays again this season this might be his last game of the season as we were expected to see cooley against edmonton the sharks did recall georgie romanoff so maybe they give him his nhl debut against calgary um so maybe um blackwood who has been dealing with some injuries here and there this season maybe they just kind of shut him down for the rest of the year uh and let let the young kids kind of get their moment to shine here so um but yeah i mean overall though blackwood Blackwood's been great this year. Um, and I think 
again, there's no reason to believe that Blackwood can't continue to be great next year for, for the Sharks. And um, yeah, so that's going to be it for me today. We'll be back tomorrow where we're going to talk about the Edmonton Oilers game. I'm also going to talk about uh, my ballot as I also, the Sharks released all their award winners. I'll reveal my ballot. Um, I'll also talk about guys who I would have voted for if we were allowed to vote on things, some of some of the uh, winners. So uh, make sure you guys are following along wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can watch on YouTube as well. Follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. Follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. Till tomorrow. Bye, friends.